So this week's PragerU video is given by David Banson, B-A-H-N-S-E-N. He's an author and a wealth manager, and his new book is Full-Time Work and the Meaning of Life, and his video is titled Work to Live or Live to Work. It is a five-minute, passionate, intelligent advocacy of the importance of work. I don't remember if you mentioned this, David, but I, I happen to be a religious man, and I I'm, I just finished the fourth volume of my five-volume commentary on the Torah, the first five books. Most people don't know anything about the Ten Commandments, but the commandment of, of observing the Sabbath, which is the fourth commandment, says six days you shall work. And, and I was raised that that is as much part of the law as keeping the Sabbath. It is normative. It is creationally normative. Not only does it say it in the fourth commandment, it says the reason we are to do it is because God did it. It models God's creational plan for the world. And the Hebrew word used, as you well know, is avodah, which is literally translated elsewhere in the Hebrew scripture to work and worship. Same it word. It's our worship of God with the work that we do, our, our earthly vocational labor. It's a beautiful understanding. Well, I, I salute you. So this with this generation, I keep reading, I don't know if it's true, I just keep reading that there is a serious percentage of this generation who will only work if they like the work. Do you have a message for them? Yeah, I, <laughs> well, the, the message that we used to give, and myself as a Gen Xer, baby boomers before my generation, it was too bad, you're going to have to work. And there was the old idea, a Puritan work ethic. If you won't work, you're not going to eat. And a lot of the younger generation has figured out how to get around that. And there are more young men living at home. I hesitate to call them men, but they are grown boys living at home into their 30s, playing video games and smoking pot. Dennis, the statistics are depressing. 3.3 million men between the ages of 25 and 35. So I'm not talking about 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds. I'm not talking about people who did real well in the stock market. 25 to 35-year-old men, 3.3 million missing from the workforce uh, out of the labor participation force since the financial crisis. This is the cultural crisis of our day. Wow. So you're telling me three and a half million males, 25 to 35, I want to get this right for me and, and the audience, are not looking for work. That is correct? That is correct. They do not have work and they are not looking for work. They are what the Bureau of Labor Statistics considers out of the workforce. It's a combination of bogus disability claims, food stamps, transfer payments, living at home longer, there there are ways that they have made it work. Because that's always the question as people say, how are they living? Well, that's the problem in a prosperous society. There's not a lot of problems in a prosperous society. But one of the problems is that there are greater ways to live off of the largesse of others. And 3.3 million people between 25 and 35 have figured it out. But that is not just my own critique and what I think would be your critique of the welfare system and the economic unfairness of it. It's impoverishing these people's souls. It's denying them their God-created privilege to work, to contribute, to produce, to create. They have now removed themselves from the joyful activity right. that life offers them. All right. We'll be back with David Banson. His video is the latest PragerU video up at PragerU.com. Work to live or live to work. Dennis Prager here with David Banson, who is terrific. He's an author, great book on work, and he is the presenter of this week's PragerU video about the importance of work. And uh, here is the beginning of that video for you. Do you work to live or do you live to work? Most people today would probably affirm the former, work to live. Most people would be wrong. We should do both, work to live and live to work. We are meant to work. I'll go one step further. It's what we are designed to do. 
If you have religious leanings, it's right there in the Ten Commandments. Six days you shall work, and then rest on the seventh, just as God did. If you don't have religious leanings, well, it's just common sense. A productive and meaningful life means spending more time working than doing anything else in your life. No other activity comes close, unless you count sleeping as an activity. What one has to offer in skill, innovation, and productivity, that is, the work we do, is central to who we are. Dennis Prager here with David Banson, who is terrific. He's an author, a great book on work, and he is the presenter of this week's PragerU video about the importance of work. And uh, here is the beginning of that video for you. Do you work to live or do you live to work? Most people today would probably affirm the former, work to live. Most people would be wrong. We should do both, work to live and live to work. We are meant to work. I'll go one step further. It's what we are designed to do. If you have religious leanings, it's right there in the Ten Commandments. Six days you shall work and then rest on the seventh, just as God did. If you don't have religious leanings, well, it's just common sense. A productive and meaningful life means spending more time working than doing anything else in your life. No other activity comes close, unless you count sleeping as an activity. What one has to offer in skill, innovation, and productivity, that is, the work we do, is central to who we are. Not All right, possible. I'll keep you uh, wanting more because it's it's terrific. And, of course, the video is a video. David Benson is speaking, but it is, as usual, terrifically illustrated by the geniuses, and they are, I think, at PragerU. There's so much to talk about on, on the work issue. By the way, I want to make clear both for me and for the uh, listener that a full-time parent, that's work. You don't only mean getting a paycheck outside of the house. That's right. It's probably the most common question I've gotten since the book came up is how I think about non-compensated work. And the way I define work, Dennis, is uh, the production of goods and services that meet the needs of humanity. And I can't think of a more productive work than parenting. Now, of course, if both parents were full-time parenting, with no outside check coming in, there's a likely question about practicality as to how they'd be supporting themselves and, and being compensated. But the point being that those who are engaged in productive work on the home front are very much engaged in their God-given capacity for productive work. So it's this is my great joy and luck having all you wonderful thinkers that I could pose any question to. What do you think of people retiring? Well, I have a whole chapter in the book essentially criticizing the very concept of retirement. Hold on, hold on. I, 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 I need to applaud. Excuse me. I can't help myself. Okay, go ahead. The implicit message in the current retirement culture is that the reason you work is to not have to do it anymore. And I think that's an existentially fatal idea of our existence, our purpose. And this is the problem for all that we bash millennials and Gen Zers for. They basically adopted that attitude from baby boomers. Boomers were very productive. They produced more goods and services than any generation in human history, but they were the first generation to enter the workforce with an eye on this thing called retirement. Because they were the first generation in human history, to have the mortality and the prosperity to be able to do it. I think it's been counterproductive. It's stripped expertise and experience from our marketplace and ultimately has left a lot of very dissatisfied seniors that are no longer feeling the productivity God made them to feel. Yeah, that's why I applauded you. It's such an interesting thing. I respect people. First of all, if people then do our volunteer work, as you say, it's the it's production of goods or services or goods and services. Volunteer work is a service. So we're not folks. David Banson is not just talking about compensated paycheck work, but to d devote a, a decade or more of your life. And in most cases, it's a couple of decades. If you retire at 65 
uh, to golfing and shopping. My dad, David, you'll love this. My father was a CPA. My father was my CPA. He was a great accountant. He was practicing till 90. The only reason he retired at 90 was because his wife, my mother, died. And he lost his he lost his his love of life. I mean, I have to admit, she, they were together 73 years. If you'd have said to him, you know, Max, you, you know, you, you, you don't have enough money. You don't, you don't have to work. He'd look at you like, what are you talking about? This is so productive in my life. So I'm so happy uh, you wrote this uh, book. So I am curious, do you get more opposition from conservatives or from folks on the left? It's been about equal. And and what's interesting is within the conservative camp, it's more often Christians than otherwise. Evangelicals right now, which I've been a lifetime evangelical, seem to have a real problem with this message. They want to believe that their work is this secular thing they have to do, and there's you know more important things that they ought to be doing. And I'm trying to get people to realize that work is the thing that God made us to do. But we're, there's a real problem across the left and right. People. That's why I asked the, the question. Word. I didn't know what your answer would be. You're, you're a thinker. I got to have you on again. It, but I don't know why you develop this masochistic love of living in New York and California. I, we, we have to speak one day, David. 